Hey, John, did you know that Clue is actually named Cluedo and comes from the Latin word Ludo, which means I play? Oh, I did not know that. But did you know Rich Uncle Pennybags is the name of the Monopoly guy? No, I did not. I don't think we should ever have dinner ever again. <laughs> this is the most boring conversation I've ever had. It's Friday night, everybody. You know what that means. Friday night, let's have some fun. Let's get together and play a ton. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Matt. And we're Friday Night Games. Oh, you didn't even let me make it awkward this time. Well, thanks for calling it out, because now it's awkward. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we are two board game enthusiasts who did collect $200, but uh, I, I didn't pass go, did you? I just got money for my birthday, man, so whatever. Nice. Is that like <laughs> pass and go? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> On today's show, we're going to discuss some games that helped inspire all those tens of thousands of board games that exist today. So these games are Clue and Monopoly. We're also going to talk about gatekeeping and why you should give those themed versions of the classics a chance. And maybe we'll even talk a bit about some of the history behind the games as well. So first of all, we'd like to start by saying we were not paid to review or preview any of these games, but we'd like to give a big thanks to The Op for sending us It, the movie, and Dungeons and Dragons versions of Clue, and Rick and Morty and Breaking Bad versions of Monopoly for use as content on this podcast and our social wait, medias. Wait, wait, hold up. Why did we decide to talk about Clue Monopoly? Well, uh, that's really interesting. So the op, this is the second time that they've sent us content for our podcast, which is really cool. We're very, very thankful for that. When we were interviewing Ross from the op, we had a very good conversation about Scooby-Doo and the escape from Haunted Mansion with him. Right, which was on our podcast, What Makes a Good IP in Board Games. So if you go back and listen to that interview with Ross, it was awesome. Right, and if you don't know much about the op, they make they combine a lot of IPs with games. Some games they, they have in-house. Some games are like, for instance, Escape from the Haunted Mansion is Cody Chronicles. They'll combine like game engines with the IPs to make games. It's actually a fantastic idea. It, it actually came up in the podcast that, you know, well, sometimes you're just skinning a game. And by skinning, we mean you're putting a, you know, you're theming a game for everybody. So you might take a game like Coded Chronicles, which might not be Scooby-Doo themed, and then you add all, you just add Scooby-Doo to it. Right. And sometimes you can argue that that doesn't work. So, you know, someone might say, oh, well, you're just putting the Golden Girls on Monopoly. You know, what's going to make me buy that game? Right. So when we when we were talking to him, he was kind of talking all about those things. And there was a light bulb moment. Would mm -hmm. you not agree? No, I 100% agree. I think we both looked at each other at the same time because we thought about it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we need to do this podcast. Right. Right. We need to give a fair chance to these games. Yeah. And for me, I see a ton of hate on social media. More specifically for Monopoly, one thing that one that really stands out to me is I was going through on Facebook one day and in one of the groups I'm in it was like someone said, my niece wants this specific Monopoly game. I don't remember what it, what it was. You know, what should I buy her instead? And I was like, and everyone in the comments, like, thankfully was like, just buy the Monopoly game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Don't, uh, don't be, don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. don't try to tell her she wants something else. It's not. Yeah. And like. You know, and then when you think about it, it's just these games are on the shelves for a reason, right? Like, well, well, do you think that person thinks that that's a real game? Do you think that's why they're trying to, I'm going to put real in quotes. They're like, that's not a real game. Are they real games? Is Clue and Monopoly real games? Well, yes. You know, let's, let's just talk about what they are. Oh, so, so just in case... You have no idea what Clue or Monopoly are, <laughs> <laughs> which maybe you live under, maybe you're living under a rock. Maybe, maybe you're not. Maybe you hey, just, maybe you've never played Clue or maybe, Monopoly. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's not sold anywhere. Maybe you have no idea how to get it, but <laughs> Clue and Monopoly are very popular games. So we're going to give a one minute rundown on those games. Go. All right. So in Clue, at the beginning of the game, you place a person, weapon, and location into an envelope at random. At each person's turn, they go to a location and guess at that location what weapon and what person. 
they go around the table until someone has one of their cards matches what the, the person has decided was their clue and they reveal that card to a player they keep going until someone can try to guess what's in that envelope matt especially likes to write lots of squiggly <laughs> symbols down on his piece of paper and then to see what someone wrote using their glasses yeah we try to uh <laughs> look at people we all have glasses we're all we're all nerds around here yeah so, so we're, <laughs> we're using the reflective surface of our glasses to see what other other people's cards were <laughs> didn't work out very well but we'll talk about that a little later <laughs> so monopoly very simply you're rolling two dice to move around a board if you land on a property you can buy that property or if you land on a card you draw the card and do what it says which is usually pay someone or pay the bank something you lose when you go bankrupt and actually the game ends when a person goes bankrupt the, well the game is the shorter version ends there is a longer version where you have everyone else has to go bankrupt before the game ends which could go uh, a very long time we call that the short version the one where everyone has to go bankrupt and uh you watch everyone get upset <laughs> when they think they're the best with money and then they're not let's answer that question are they real games so with Clue, it's a roll and it's a roll and move mechanic, and is that pointless? So here's the thing, right? You're rolling dice in Clue, right? And you and you use the dice roll to move around the board. Do you think rolling the dice is an important concept? I mean, I haven't played the original Clue in a long time, but in these new versions, they've got pieces with question marks on them. Sometimes a good strategy is you can land on these question marks and pick up these cards that kind of give you like an extra power or whatever right so you know the, when we were playing Dungeons and Dragons the card that I I drew was allowed me to go twice mm -hmm. in one turn the dice the dice can work really well that way like if you're if you're trying to manipulate how your character plays in the game and you can really land on these question mark spaces to get these cards I the, the, they're called intrigue cards and I feel like that they were pretty underutilized in our game of Dungeons and Dragons clue but I, when I played the it game with it clue with my wife i was using those cards left and right because they were they were like you know look at make another player look at uh show them a card another card in your hand their hands some of them you have to discard right away some of them you can keep to the end of the game i had one that allowed me to move to any space that i i needed to move to so i saved it to the end when i needed to get to the um middle of the board to guess hmm. guess the answer oh, that's pretty cool okay so let's say we took away the entry cards Okay. Right. And that we're at the classic game now, you know, do you think you really need the dice or could you just move your character to any You could probably move location, your character to any, right? any location. Right. And that's what people argue. The online purists who don't necessarily like it, they're like, well, why don't I just move? And some people actually said they played the game like that and it worked. Yeah. But I totally understand what you're saying. With the clue spaces, yeah, I, I kind of see like you could maybe just play the game wholly by landing on the clue spaces and maybe that is a strategy in its own right which you said you you did 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 you win with that uh i guessed incorrectly oh but you're close that was close yeah okay so one real complaint i heard too was that these like clue needs social deduction like the game resistance where you have like a hidden betrayer or something like that do you do you, do you agree do you think there should be like a bluffing element to clue in a sense you can bluff a little bit in it right so what i noticed when we played that michaela had at one point had two cards for for one of the one of the clues and she kept only showing one mm. technically i consider that bluffing because she's showing the same card to everyone right even though i, I knew she had the two after like we revealed our hands at the end of the game because um, she had like the item and I think she had the location, but she was only showing the item. So that's like, I guess, the bluffing strategy in it. And the way I played our game is, you know, when you you went first and you went to this one location and like Michaela said they couldn't answer. Mike said they couldn't answer. And I was like, well, they obviously don't have any of these things. So it's mm -hmm. got to be this location for sure. Unless, unless you are just bluffing by going to that location, even though you have it in your hand, totally wasn't right. Which I, is I was, which is an awesome strategy that you can use to throw people off your scent. I'm right? just gonna tell you that I was uh, just trying to remember how to play. <laughs> 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 so let you know, <laughs> I was not that clever at that first turn. Right, that would have been amazing though if I did do that. That'd yeah, throw I did that with my with my game for it. Wow, I I was using. Well, I was using card, yeah, cards out of my hand. So, like, I was using uh, Richie Tozier. At, I was like, oh, it's Richie with this and this. And I kept saying Richie. Oh, to kind of throw your wife off in the game. Yeah. So, like, well, obviously, he doesn't have it. So, I'm never going to ask him for it. Right. Right. And then finally, she's like, he has that card. 
<laughs> <laughs> There's no way he doesn't have this card. You know, that's interesting. So, so I guess what you're saying is there is that social deduction there if you want it to be there. Right. Maybe but I you think... need to play enough games to, to see it. Yeah. That's how I played and I and I, you know, try to throw people off my scent that way. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even honestly it's been such a long time since I played Clue, I was just trying to remember how to play it. So <laughs> There is uh, another game that kind of comes to mind when I think of Clue, and it's kind of like the newer... Is Mysterium... Have you ever played Mysterium? I haven't. Okay. But you know about it from us. Yeah, is that the game where, like, you're trying to find... You're you're like a ghost, and you're trying to figure out, like, what happened to you? Is, mm-hmm. that, is that what the game it is? Yeah, yes. I have not played it. So you're a ghost, you have clues, and you break out a clue from what's being laid on the board, so people have to reveal their card, and, and then they slowly move down the clue. It's kind of like the same thing. You're like trying to figure out who killed who with what okay. where it, and it plays out a little bit like dixit so you have these cards that have images and you're trying to like use all the images in front of you to give a hint you're the ghost gives a hint through laying down cards that kind of resemble all the cards on the board okay it's hard but it's co-op and it's super fun now is it is it better i don't know i feel like i feel like if you like clue you're gonna like that but that also could be gatekeeping <laughs> <laughs> which is a little later <laughs> But Mysterium is one of my favorite games. So or is it a gateway? Clue's the gateway. It, it's a to gate. That. Yeah, Clue is the gateway to it for sure. But I don't want to just you know I, we'll talk about our experience with Clue a little bit later. But I don't you know I I my question specifically is it better? And I don't think there's a better in there. I just think it's a next next step. It's a it's a good if you like this you'll like that. Cool. So what about Monopoly, Matt? So is Monopoly a real game? It is, and it suffers from four main problems so the first one is player elimination so this is kind of something that doesn't fly as much anymore so when someone dies they're out for good so if the game is going to everyone has to go bankrupt before the game ends the game could last three hours you could be out in half an hour that, right? bl- that sucks yeah and i actually played a couple of games like that and it was not fun i wasn't sitting around but the person who was i really felt bad for because they are actually the one who brought up who brought the game and was like hey let's play it <laughs> and then we he person died within half an hour and then he's just you know doing some other stuff reading a book the next two hours <laughs> read a novel <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> The second problem is what they call the runaway leader problem. Do you have an idea what that means? Yeah. Is that like where you know this person's winning? Yeah. They've got like all the money. Yeah. Most of the properties, hotels built on all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very, very hard to beat. Yeah. And that's sort of like a annoying thing right because you you know once you start seeing someone get ahead you're like oh they're it's it's hard to catch up. So actually the runaway leader problem leads into the next problem which is the kingmaker problem. So if you're playing a three-player game and then that person is is a runaway leader, well, what's the next what's the next logical thing for those other two to do? Well, and eliminate somebody. No, they're going to team up. Yeah, to do eliminate. Yeah. The other person. Well, yeah, so so the two the two losers, the one loser is going to give all his cash, all his property to the to the other loser and then he's going to basically make him the king <laughs> to be the runaway leader. Right. Right. So that's how you got the kingmaker problem because now one person doesn't care anymore. So they're like, well, I'm going to help this guy win. So when when I think about Monopoly, because it's been like years since I played it. And I know. Until now. Until now, yes. When I was taught the rules, I was taught the rules by my parents. Right. Okay. So, okay. This is very interesting. Right. Like, so I feel like there were so many rules made up. <laughs> For this game that they just sort of become almost like urban legends, right? Like, or, or like it's the telephone game. Like it goes down, down, down and it get, like the actual rules have been watered down to what people quote unquote play and they don't actually play the game with its original intended rules. So therefore the game is not being played correctly. Therefore people are getting more frustrated Right, playing so, the game because they're just not playing it to correctly to begin with. So the fourth problem is no one knows the rules. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and and the real truth is why does you know why do these people not know the rules? What do you think? I have an answer to this. Well, I hate reading rules. Okay, so that's probably a good reason. I was gonna say <laughs> people are lazy, so. right? Because think about it, it's a, it is work to read, sit and read an instruction manual to try and play a game, right? 
Yeah. You've been taught Monopoly once, so you're probably going to go and just be like, oh, I know how to play in a Monopoly. Let me take that free parking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like, oh, I, it's like, it's like John, if I said to you, you don't know how to drive a car, what would you say to me? Like, of course I do. No, you don't. You don't know how to drive a car. Yeah, why not? Like, like, yeah, you know how to drive the car, but like, do you know all the rules, right? Do you know all, you know? <laughs> You know, I modify the rules to get from point A <laughs> to point B or whatever, okay? And that's exactly what these people are doing. That's why right? I have an unpaid ticket in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on a funny note, I just quickly Googled Monopoly house rules and I got this like Wikipedia <laughs> article and there's like nine rules plus 10 is miscellaneous and then nine has like four different rules attached to it. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you did you ever have any uh, interesting house rules? I think I just played. You know, when we would we would pay if anything that wasn't paid directly to the bank went into the middle of the board, and whoever landed on the free parking got that cash. Oh, that's that's gonna keep the game going. Right. Yeah. So that's not actually a rule. I know. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That sounds like a lazy banker. Just like just throw it in the middle. Just throw. Just throw it. I don't want to like actually count this or put it away, so we'll just put it in the middle. <laughs> you know, when we landed on a property, uh, we just, I think, see, I don't even know the rules myself fully, but I know when you land on a property, you know, we would just buy it. But the, I think the rules is everyone has to bid on it. Yeah, there's actually an on. auction. If you choose not to buy it or something, there's actually an auction yeah. for it. So, And that's that's actually the most common rule people screw up right and it's a part of the original game too I, I and i think that would make the game more fun it does and actually i actually played it that way when i played it you know besides this time i played it i played two or three games uh it'd be like seven years now but we played it in a row and that's how we played it and i was just like destroying it because i would wait for people who couldn't buy something and then i'd just be like one dollar <laughs> i was grabbing properties for like one dollar i'm like take that I must admit, I, I, I'm I decent at most of the games, mainly because I read the rules, but I, for some reason, I am very good at Monopoly. I should enter the tournament. Do it. <laughs> I should enter the tournament. Nice. So Ed, did you play with any house rules growing up? Honestly, we never played with the bidding rule. We didn't know about it right. growing up. I knew about it later on because we actually read the rules. <laughs> and we did play that everyone was bankrupt, which actually is a very boring game. And it just seems like everyone gives up after an hour anyway. Mm -hmm. So the game of playing when one person gets bankrupt and then counting up your properties and money and everything to determine a winner is probably the best way to play it. And actually, one of the most one of the most fun versions I played was the kids version. Hasbro makes a a, Monopoly Junior. Yeah, Monopoly Junior. I actually really enjoyed it because I'm like, oh, this game you could pump out in like 15 minutes, and it's Monopoly. Yeah, and for me, what I've been really into the past couple of years was Monopoly Deal. Oh, what's oh, is that the card game? Yeah, so it's super fun, super fast. Like games last 10, 15 minutes maybe, and it's like first to get three properties wins, you know. And that kind of like rekindled my love. Oh, for Monopoly. I mean, it gave you a new way to play, right? And and it was very enjoyable, which was really nice. So okay, so hold on, let's get back on point here. Why is there so much hate for these games? <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of gushed about it for a minute there. Why why is there so much hate for these games, specifically Monopoly? What do you what do you think? What do you think? And you know, I really think that people don't let others give it a chance. So wait, what do you mean? So you know, the term that's been thrown around is called gatekeeping. So you know, when someone takes it upon themselves to decide who does or does not have access or rights to a community or identity. Ooh. You know, typically a person might come to a forum and, and ask about Monopoly. And, you know, one of the comments would be like, oh, get out of here. You need to play better games. You know, Monopoly's the worst. Oh, if you like Monopoly, is it kind of like, <laughs> if you like Monopoly... Well, then you should try these super complicated Euro worker economy, dice builder, bag building games. Exactly. That take 10 hours to play. Right. <laughs> you know, and it's just when you think about Monopoly, just just let people play Monopoly. That might be the only game they know. Right. right? Okay. So, so let's get back to, you know, maybe there's some reasons for it, but let's get back to why there is hate for the game. So we know what gatekeeping is. We just defined it. Mm-hmm. So how does that, you know, why is there hate for this game? Obviously, you know, looking at your collection behind us, Mm -hmm. there's a lot more options out there. 
Board games have definitely evolved to something else. There's a lot more choices to play in the market. And there's some some games are similar, if not better, than Monopoly. Right. Okay. Which which is a subject which is a subjective opinion, right? Right. Maybe Monopoly is the best game. Right. To someone. Exactly. It may not be us, but we're also a different type of consumer. To us, we're trying to learn all the new games, right? But that's also our side hustle. Well, we don't make any money. Our, our side, our side <laughs> hobby, right? right? Our hobby is to make content, and so we learn all these games. So yeah, we know Monopoly. We know it enough, and it's hard for us to get that to the table because we have to get other games to the table to understand. Them, Correct. Right. And and yes, they're similar. I I prefer them over Monopoly, and I'm sure you prefer some games over Monopoly. But that doesn't mean other people were going to prefer those exact same games over Monopoly, right? And that's true. And I'm always willing to go back and play Monopoly. Right. Right. Like. I would never tell someone, no, let's not play that if that's the game they brought to the table. Right. So so I like to think we're a connoisseur or heavy consumer <laughs> <laughs> of board games and our tastes have probably improved. Right. Right. So for instance, if you, uh, here's, here's a fun Canadian fact for you. We have a restaurant called Harvey's. Harvey's is like, kind of like a make your own burger. It's the same as McDonald's. Prices are exactly the same, but you basically get to choose all your toppings on the burger, which is exciting because I love double pickles. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, are you going to ask a food critic what they think of Harvey's? Like, what are they going to say? They're going to be like, well, it's no, you know, they, they go to a five-star restaurant. They're going to be like, well, Harvey's hamburger is not going to be a five-star restaurant pasta dish. <laughs> like that $900 chicken we had in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> no, I pre- so he's, John's referring to our podcast about uh, Pack South. You should go listen to that one. No, Harvey's hamburgers are better than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but like you know, a food critic is going to be like, and they should have this opinion. You know, if you're going for fast food, a food critic should still have an opinion about fast food, right? Right. So like you know, as if I were to be a fast food consumer, I actually prefer Harvey's, right? I actually prefer it over the other ones. And I like it because you could put whatever you want on your burger and they're fresh off the grill and they have that like smoke taste to them. I'm not getting paid by Harvey's right now whatsoever, <laughs> but if they are send me free burgers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so the forums, most of the like Reddit, the forums, Board Game Geek forums, Board Game Geek itself is going to attract a different type of, of player one who's trying to look for something more than clue more than monopoly more than ticket to ride they're trying to see what's out there right they're because they're starting to become consumers right when you bring that up it, it, it can almost sway people's views one way or the other right so when you tell someone that you're into board games it might trigger response like oh monopoly is cool right like i've i've i talk about board games a lot especially now doing this and a lot of people like they a lot of people that i talk to haven't played anything other than Monopoly, right? Luckily, and, and, right. And, and let's just say it right now, it's that's it, fine. Exactly. You know, that's fine. And then they ask, you know, is there something else I should play? Or, and then I say, if you like Monopoly, play Monopoly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah I'm yeah. not going to tell you do something else. You know, but these are, these are some games that I enjoy. But so what if like someone said, John, I love Monopoly, but I want to, but I want a recommendation. Right. What, what would you, you know, where would you? I'm terrible at recommendations. <laughs> number one, okay. I have a very hard time just remembering what we played like last week. <laughs> um, but I usually, I usually go. I ask them what they like. Right. You know, if you like Monopoly, that's cool. What, what, what kind of games are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for? Something that's two player. You can play with your family. Blah blah blah. And then I'll recommend from there. You know, you know, as us, I like to try to get people past Monopoly. But okay. if someone really likes Monopoly, I'm not going to tell them they need to go find another game. Right. In fact, I'll be like, "Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with Monopoly." And I and I'd probably actually point out that there's other versions of Monopoly they should check out. You know, right. there's a gamer version of it, which is kind of like playing Mario Kart. You know, there's there's a couple theme versions that we played. You know, there's the original. There's a quick version. Like, I think that's a really cool. Yeah, and what I think they're doing, like they they're evolving the Monopoly game. You know, and then just last year they released two versions, like the super quick version, mm-hmm. and then the super long version. Right. So. They understand, yeah. you know, what people love and what they don't like about the game. As far as going as, like, board game content creators, like, I know we don't really want to portray that we are people seeing that that who play with Monopoly, I guess. You got to give credit where credit's due. And I know one of the first board game I played was probably Monopoly. 
but I'm pretty sure it's one of the first board games many people have played. Right. right. So you got to give credit where credit's due. You, you've but, uh, everyone's played Monopoly. But as a content creator, you know, and this is this is my view of all content creators. We don't want to be seen. We want we want to be seen as complex individuals who engage in you know three year sessions of D and D and like <laughs> we're the experts, right? Yeah. I think this is this is something. I'm think I'm hitting on something right here. Oh, what we bring up like every podcast? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ego. Yeah. Ego? <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's yeah. totally ego. Like if if you if someone comes to you and you're like. Oh, all you play is Monopoly? That's kind of like saying, like, hey, I'm better than you. Yeah. Oh, you only brought, like, a peanut butter sandwich for lunch? Check out my, like, club sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try to one-up you on everything, right? Like... And then the gatekeeping is kind of like stroking your own ego. You're kind of like you're kind of like telling them like, "Hey, I am better than you because I know more." I'm going to ask you about what board games you like and you're just going to say Monopoly and I'm going to be like, "Well, that's cool, but you don't know about uh Wingspan, do you?" <laughs> uh, you can't get you can't get anywhere unless you know about unless you don't know unless you know about Wingspan, you ain't going anywhere. World's best podcast heard to hear five times every episode <laughs> do you really think that we need to hate on these games so much i don't i actually don't think so and i think no. that's one of the things that really hit home when we're talking to ross too right and like we said before monopoly and clue are most likely your first taste into the board game world and they're super like accessible because everyone should know how to play them maybe we don't know all the rules but you know those house rules for monopoly can be okay y you know let's let's think about that for a second it is accessible because you almost know the rules and you just play without actually reading the rules which is kind of cool it's like a free form game right <laughs> everyone has their own version right dude it's like a family like recipe like passed down <laughs> generations to generations it's like this is this is how we play monopoly they should have contests who is the best version <laughs> of monopoly that's like a chili cook-off and then when that you know your love for that game fades away there's thousands of games out there oh tens of thousands that you can play right and and i think what, what during the interview like ross put made a really good point was like you know picture you know your your mom or your like one of your grandparents or something they're out shopping for you for like your birthday or christmas or something right and they go to the they go to the store you know like and they see oh monopoly and like oh i love playing monopoly when i was a kid you know and like i know matt likes breaking bad oh look <laughs> there's a breaking bad monopoly i'm gonna buy that Perfect. so like so now you have a gift that's like pretty decent right and you know the store the store got a sale and you know that grandmother or parent is is buying it because of their memories they had with that game and it's you know almost creating a new memory for the person receiving it right right like, and 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 that that right there so let's say i wasn't who i am and i wasn't into the hobby and my grandma gives me breaking bad monopoly Right. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I play it. And I'm like, wow, this is actually kind of cool. What goes through your mind? Right into your mind is like, hey, you know what? Maybe I want to get into this hobby. Maybe I don't just want to get Breaking Bad Monopoly. Maybe I want to try out Wingspan. Right. Right. And that's where they really got you. Yeah. Because now you've introduced someone into it. And, and I think that that is it's huge. It's a huge goal. So like, for instance, one of the very first games as a family that we introduced to our nieces, my brother-in-law did, was actually Monopoly Junior. And they loved it. In fact, they loved it so much, you know, and then, you know, my, my in-laws would be like, oh, you know, you know, Matt reviews games and plays them. And then all of a sudden they come down, they're like, Uncle Matt, we want to see your collection. And then I'm like, and they want to play with me. And I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's so cute. Unfortunately, my games are really complicated and they're only four years old, but at the same, <laughs> but at the same time, it's awesome because that gets them really into it. And I, and I promise them, I'm like, Hey, well, when you get older, we'll play some of these games that are obviously appropriate to you. Right. Right. And I think that that is huge. And so we, you know, just by that introducing to Monopoly Junior and then knowing that there's a lot more through me, you've created two more gamers that in the future. Right. It's like one of the original board games, too. Right. Like, mm, you know, yeah. we, we wouldn't have, you know, games like freaking Gloomhaven if it wasn't for Monopoly. You know what I mean? Like it all starts somewhere. And I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting emotional over here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah jo John is actually crying. <laughs> He's got tears down his face. But no, it's true. We wouldn't have what we have if we didn't have Monopoly or Clue. Yeah, you know, and there's there's a really good understanding of the game mechanics in there of, you know, trading and probabilities. And yeah, the game the game is actually deep. 
Yeah. And it's actually deep enough to have a competition. And if you ever talk to anyone who is a master of Monopoly or Clue, they'll tell you that there's all these probabilities and stuff. And they're just they're just better at it than you are. Right. You know, and, and that actually tells you that that's a game. If there's a game that someone understands the patterns of it, then it's a true game. Right. You know, you can't argue that. Now, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, you should hate on Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason why is that sometimes you need to play other games too. True. So give other games love. It doesn't mean you need to throw Monopoly in the garbage. Just give other games love too, you know? Right. And there's hundreds of thousands of games out there. You know, Monopoly's just one. Right. Right. Monopoly so, is the one. The one. And Clue, right? So there's tons of games out there. A lot of great games. Just keep giving Monopoly a chance every now and then is what I'm saying. So I have an interesting theory about gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes gatekeepers are uh, mistaken. Are they like over enthusiastic gamers and like people who maybe played a lot of games and they just kind of want to tell you about them but sometimes it comes off as conceited what do you what do you think about that theory it's hard to say because a lot of times on social media like it just seems like straight up hate for um monopoly but i could i can see if someone was like you know what yeah that's cool i like this game a little bit better I think it might be a, a better way of going about it. But just looking at some of the comments, it's just like, like the one I said before, right. it was like, like the community did actually a really good job of just saying, well, if your niece wants that Monopoly game, just buy her that <laughs> Monopoly game, play it with her and then be like, hey, check this game out. Right. Right. If you don't want her to play Monopoly that bad, but that's what they want. And that's something that's going to interest them. And like you said before, is going to get them in interested in the rest of the board game hobby. On a really cool note. So, you know, we've been doing this for a while now. And my brother uh, just kind of started getting into like these older games. So he'll like bring them over and then we'll play them together. And it's pretty it's pretty funny. But the, what I've learned is that like I've learned that you just sometimes you have a game you really want to play and you just need people to play with. And it's not about playing more games or better games or whatever. It's just about learning yourself. Right. You know, he wants to discover the games that he wants to discover. And then so I kind of just decided like I'm not going to gatekeep him. I'm not going to discourage him. I'm just going to play the games with him. Right. And have him and then ask him questions qualitative questions like oh did you enjoy this did you enjoy this better than this game what would you improve things like that and then you kind of lead him into new things that's and, good and it actually did it led him into a conversation of well what, what's the difference between this game and the games you have on your shelf behind me and you know that was a very good conversation topic between me and my brother that's awesome yeah we were super fortunate enough to obtain it and dungeons and dragons clue as well as rick and morty and breaking bad monopoly so matt why do you think people should give these games a chance there's lots of reasons there is a lot of reasons. Number one, these games have the latest rule sets. So if you think Clue might have been boring in the 90s, well, you know, they've obviously thought about it <laughs> and made some, you know, a little, a little little minor tweaks. You're not looking at, like, completely overhauls on the gameplay, but little minor tweaks to make the game either go faster or be more fun. Yeah, there was a couple cool different things in the Clues that we played that was like, wow, that's really awesome. So in both games, uh, players had player powers. Right. The intrigue card cards are really cool. Right. So in D and D clue, if you drew the was it Zerial? You, you drew you drew Zerials from the intrigue deck. Yep. Which is the question mark deck. And then if you drew eight, you're out of the game. Right. So you had uh, the first seven did nothing, and when you drew the eighth one, whoever drew that is out of the game. They can still provide clues. Right. Right. And they actually shuffle the eight Zerial card back into the deck, so yeah. they someone else could be eliminated if everyone's just continually trying to get the intrigue cards, which is kind of neat. Yeah, that was cool. I liked. We don't. I haven't played it, and uh, but I saw it at the store the other day. It was the Harry Potter clue? So like Hogwarts, how like the stairs change, the board rotates. So there's like a little um, like wheel in the in the in the board or something. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So it changes. So that's really awesome. Yeah, I uh, I really wanted to get my hands on the Legend of Zelda clue because there's like a boss battle mechanic in it that's cool yeah i don't know how it exactly plays out but i just heard that and i'm like oh, this is just like i i love nintendo and it's just a mind-blowing thing right you can make you make clue better like that's so cool what about you which one am i excited for why should you give this why should you give these games a chance oh yeah like they were just fun it was fun to it was like very nostalgic for me to play them again my, my favorite part it was reading the rules for the the clue dungeon and dragons where it's like okay these are all the changes uh the rest is just clue <laughs> <laughs> it says it at the end uh, it's all, like, yeah, it also is funny. like if you don't know just read this paragraph <laughs> 
Uh, what did you think of the custom pieces? You know, so like those four versions all have like their own custom pieces. Yeah, you know what? They were they were really cool. I like. I'm really I really like horror movies, and I really enjoyed the first chapter of the new It movies in the the game. They act as like relics. I think they're called. They're things that you would collect to help kind of destroy Pennywise the clown. I wish there was a little bit more Pennywise in, intertwined in it, surprise element into it. Yeah. Maybe I didn't. Maybe there was in the entry cards. That I just never pulled them. But they were they were cool. There was like Richie's glasses. There's like the Pennywise Jack in the box. There's like the TV with like Pennywise on it. It was pretty cool. And like you're you're guessing who Pennywise has like captured using what relic to to lure them in and at what location. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty. I really love the uh, the D and D clue had like the, all the little like weapons and stuff. I just thought that was amazing. Plus the board, the board you can actually play on in a D and D campaign when you're done. I thought that was so cool. That is pretty cool. And when Ross mentioned that, I was like, "How are you? How are you going to do that?" And I'm like, "But it makes sense. It's all just like squares you're moving, right?" And yeah, exactly. Go to different locations and do stuff. So <laughs> why not? Yeah, it just could be like the main town you all hang out in. You know, I thought that was awesome. But okay, hold on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So isn't it still the same game, right? At the end of the day, Monopoly is still Monopoly. You know, why should we? You know, why should why should anyone buy these any of these versions? What I think what's what's cool about Monopoly, people love Monopoly and they love collecting Monopoly. Right? So if you like Monopoly and you like say Rick and Morty or Breaking Bad, then buy the it buy the game, right? Like it's fun and it's it's got all these cool pieces. Like the Rick and Morty pieces are amazing. Yeah, the Breaking Bad instead of like hotels and stuff, you're making like basically crack houses. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's actually I mean it is like yes, it is Monopoly, but to me it's sort of like and obviously I set up the question, but in my honest opinion, you know, if you're going to own Monopoly, own a version that you actually love the theme of. Right. You know, I I I really like I really like the the theme of Breaking Bad. Like it's cool that they changed the Monopoly logo to like the blue. The blue. You know, I, I like the teddy bear token. You know that the one that's like floating in the pool in the right. background scenes, right. and it's like and it's silver, just like you know in in the uh, the flashback scenes, at the beginning of the episodes and stuff like that. These little details that they put in, yeah. Make it... And and I used to think like going into stores before we started this and seeing all these different skin monopolies. I'm like, why does everything? a monopoly i'm like how do i get my face on a monopoly right and but <laughs> ross the, said you can <laughs> yeah but the amount of detail they put in just to make this game fun for the fan of breaking bad and the fan of monopoly they do such good good work in that right like all the locations have meaning and exactly you know even the rick and morty one it's not locations it's, it's like weird uh i don't know some weird like people you're making <laughs> <laughs> Yep, call me out. I'm not a true Rick and Morty fan. <laughs> That's okay. But, you know, as, as like, I may not play Monopoly very often, but, you know, as a hobbyist uh, or, you know, I'm a collector, and if I'm going to invest in something, I'm going to invest in the one I want. So, for instance, that Legend of Zelda Clue, like, if I want Clue, like, that's the one I want. Right. Because it means something to me. I mean, I should have Clue because I, I am a board game collector. I do. I do. do. Actually, <laughs> you could thank my brother for that. Yeah. Right? He actually was like, oh, you love board games. You should get this game. And then he's right you know what i mean you can't you can't throw away the original games because they mean a lot they mean something Mm -hmm. and also like these things they get you to feel you know excited you know and and if it gets you you know when there's a version that just makes me feel excited you know it's doing something right Right. you know if if there was just you know for instance clue i'm not as excited about but the legend of zelda clue got me really 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 excited like just like blew my mind Right. And then it's just like, okay, you know, if it were just Zelda skinned, I might only purchase it if it was like Clue with Zelda. If it, you know, if I was really a big Zelda fan, I'm not a huge Zelda fan, but then it had boss battles in it. I'm like, oh my, I need this. You know what I mean? (laughs) I need this. And not only am I going to need it, Novi's going to need it because he's a huge, you know, Legend of Zelda fan. In fact, when we were like talking about it, he's like, oh my, he's like, you're going to be able to get that. He's just, he's so excited. In fact, I was like, you know, like this is rev- if we get that as a review copy, Novi, you're just going to take it because you would be the one who would absolutely adore right. that game. So, Matthew, how was your experience playing these games again for the first time? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, from like watching the group, we had a ton of fun. 
especially when a little bit of the accusations are, are trying to like figure out what people had were going around. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause we're staring. Remember the one point we're all looking at Novi's glasses and we're like, Oh, can you just tilt your head <laughs> uh, 45 degrees slightly <laughs> downward so I can read, uh, yeah. What weapon that is in there your hand? Is that a bow or a dagger? Yeah. Just kind of move your, move your glasses down just a little bit more Novi. Right. And we're all like a big thing is I always, I can gauge if we're having fun. Right. And we were definitely having fun. Yeah, and I really enjoy playing because I played it with my wife, it Clue with my wife, and then we played Dungeons & Dragons and the Monopoly games here. And it was just nice to just kind of go back to those classic games. And for for players like, you know, Michaela in our group who, who like, you know, lighter party games... It was really, it was really nice to see her like super engaged in the games we were playing. That you know, then it wasn't whatever um, we didn't play test this or yeah, Cards Against Humanity or something like that, right? So it was nice to get like have her engaged. I mean, I wish Bill played. Oh, he fell asleep yeah. though. He was asleep <laughs> within like ten minutes. Bill's been working on his house for a while. Yeah, he's um, always be working on his house, but but it was nice just to uh, to play, and I had I had a I had a ton of fun. Yeah, and it kind of reminded me why Clue was so awesome, right? It just you know you move and guess, you just figure out deductive reasoning, you just have deductive reasoning skills you're trying to improve on. You figure out who was paying attention, which was not me. <laughs> in fact at the very beginning i started doodling like who said what and i'm like okay these people probably don't have these and then all of a sudden i couldn't remember what my doodles were on my page and i'm like i don't know what is what i have to erase a lot of this and start again yeah <laughs> which and i'm just like xing the proper things yeah I, well, I didn't know i actually didn't even realize that's what really got me i'm like i actually don't even really know how to use this page what am i supposed to do <laughs> Wait, I don't know. I got to read the rules there, Matt. I didn't read the rules. I know. <laughs> so, I mean, we're talking all about this gatekeeping. What makes a g amazing community gatekeeper? If you want to if you want to be the person that's going to gatekeep me, let's do it. Let's okay, do it. Okay, so I want to give Matt and John's four amazing tips to being a phenomenal gatekeeper. Tip number 1. Drum roll, please. Make them feel unwelcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know, start, I, I, I don't know how you're going to do this, but for me, I would start by giving like a nice, serious face. So like, for instance, you know, you want to ask me what, you want to ask me like, uh, how you like Monopoly? Hey, Matt, I want to buy my kid frozen Monopoly. What do you think about that? He's staring me down. He's not even <laughs> blinking. <laughs> if this was a message for him, I wouldn't even respond to you. I might just respond with a blank. <laughs> Or dot, dot, dot. dot and that dot, way, dot. that way, as a gatekeeper, they know that I mean business. <laughs> they have made the ultimate poor decision by me just putting dot, dot, <laughs> dot down. I've acknowledged their post, but I'm not even going to bother writing anything. Okay. That's tip number one for being an amazing gatekeeper. So tip number two, always, always make sure you one-up them. If they mention a game, <laughs> make sure... You let them know that you play it, but on a different level. Right. So, hey, uh, I play Monopoly, John. Yeah. Well, do you play it without looking at your cards? <laughs> That's how I do it. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't look at your cards? <laughs> Man, you got to live on the edge, dude. <laughs> Yeah, bro. You're, wow, that's a... I hide all my properties underneath the board, and I just assume you landed on the one that I own. So <laughs> give me that money. <laughs> wow, you really are a god amongst gatekeepers. Yeah. Well, tip number three, make sure you scoff at everything they say. I love Matt, I just love playing Monopoly with my kids. <laughs> 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 Well, you know, I don't know. I play Catan a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I did this weekend? I mastered every faction in Root. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tip number four, always have that air that you just know more than the other player. Hey, John, man, I love playing Root with you, buddy. Uh, yeah, I really love that attacking mechanism in Root. <sighs> Man, you cannot nearly attack and root unless you understand the rule. 2.8. Ruler. The ruler of a clearing is the player with the most total warriors and buildings in that clearing. Tokens and pawns do not contribute to the rule. If there's a tie between the players in a clearing, no one is the ruler. Wow, I, I, I guess I don't know root at all. <laughs> 
All right, so those are four tips on being an amazing gatekeeper. Yeah, make sure you go out and use them. <laughs> we want to hear your stories about you doing these things. In fact, post on our socials. Be like, I, we took those four tips and we actually did them. You let us know. Yeah, this should be our first YouTube video. <laughs> Probably. It'd well, be a great. It'd be, be really great. hilarious. It'd be, but it'd be great. I say we do it next week. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely, definitely go out and uh, use our rules and tell right. us, tell us how they worked. Did you discourage a bunch of uh, non-gamers? You freak them out a little bit? <laughs> Make them pee their pants a little bit? I just, I just commented on, on a Facebook post. Someone was asking like, what game should I give my eight-year-old nephew? And I said, not Monopoly. <laughs> I didn't say that at all. No, that'd be horrible. <laughs> I actually said buy buy them a skin Monopoly or Clue, and I just played D and D, and I really loved it. So, oh, that's sweet of you. There you go. There you go. All right. So, Matt, we talked about Clue. We talked about Monopoly. We talked mm-hmm. about why you should play it. We should talked about gatekeeping and why people don't like playing Monopoly or Clue. But do we have actually any really cool, fun facts about the games at all? Yeah. So I did. I actually did look up a little bit of history. Originally, I thought we were going to take this podcast into like a kind of a historic turn. But then I'm like, well, we ain't that. No, we're not historians. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I can read Wikipedia. Anyone can read Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> right? You care about the history? Go read Wikipedia. There you go. So yeah, we'll just give a couple of the really interesting things so you can impress your friends at a dinner table <laughs> <laughs> so clue actually is a name clue yeah it's actually named cluedo so it's a combination of clue and ludo and ludo is a latin word for i play nice so i play clue nice clue was invented during the uk air raids of world war ii anthony pratt and his wife turned the theme of a murder mystery dinner that he actually would play an instrument at into a board game Nice. So it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Who killed who with what where is typical dinner theater. So pretty neat. Colonel Mustard was originally Colonel Yellow, but yellow was a term for a cowardly soldier. So it didn't make sense for an enlisted man to be cowardly. So it was removed. That's cool. And Monopoly was derived from the Landlord's Game by Lizzie McGee in 1903. The purpose of the game was to demonstrate that an economy which rewards wealth creation is better than one where monopolists work under few constraints. I.e. 2008 housing (laughs) crisis, anyone? (laughs) Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The game had two sets of rules, one with taxation and another which was similar to the current rules. During World War II, there was a special uh, Prisoners of War edition that held maps, compasses, real money, and other tools for escaping. That's pretty interesting. That is super interesting. And do you know Mr. Monopoly's name? Mr. Top Hat himself? (laughs) Remember in Ace Ventura when when Nature Calls, he like punches the dude and then he he, like flips him over. He's like, look at me. I'm the Monopoly man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway his name is uh rich uncle Pennybags. <laughs> so we want to give a huge thank you to the op for sending us the it clue dungeon dragons clue rick and morty and breaking bad monopoly for us to play and talk about on tonight's podcast so if you are liking what you hear do not forget to follow us on our social media so instagram at friday night game underscore official twitter at friday night gms follow us on our streams and don't forget to leave us a review on apple Podcasts. we have just started streaming as well so check us out on twitch.tv slash friday night gms if there's a game that you want us to play or if a game that if you've created a game and want us to check it out or preview it on our podcast uh, shoot us an email at info at friday night dot games and yeah it's friday night let's have some fun matt